Boy there, it's Skyward Shield. Welcome back to Football Talks. Week 3 is in the books, and boy, how unpredictable it was. I am joined by Bill once again. Say hello, Bill. Hey, hey, what's up? Yeah, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, let's go straight into it. We have, well, actually, no, that's a, that's a bit of a lie. I, we have, well, we have issues that need to be brought up because, you know... Politics have now seeped into sports, but Which before we get to that exactly, there was something that kind of got overshadowed by this. Now, Aaron Hernandez's autopsy is finally finished, and it turns out his brain had some of the most advanced CTE you'll ever see that in a young person. It was actually up there with players that are in their 60s, which is pretty yep. scary, and it makes you wonder if he had that. Then he was in the middle of his prime before he got, before he uh, murdered those two guys. Um, imagine how much other players are, are are right now, and that makes me all, uh, recall about um, about uh, what Giselle is telling that telling Tom Brady to retire and then bringing up the concussion the concussions. You cannot diagnose CTE until you're dead. So basically, this is like a post uh, post death type of thing. That's the only way you find out. Right. And I mean, there's, there's a few precursors that you can look for if someone's having trouble talking or speaking, uh, being, you know, going, uh, uh, and then just taking a while to think of the thought that they need to think, you know, and then, then eventually spitting it out. That could be a sign of it. And you see it in some former players on some of the, on some of the networks as well. Yeah. But, um, I know that I know that there will be like some people who are who try to easily go around this issue by saying, "What are you going to defend a murderer?" It's like that. I I will make that perfectly clear. I am not justifying anything he did, and I'm not sure if the CTE had anything to do with the murders. I really doubt it did. No. no. But I, I'm not defending him as a murderer. I'm talking about when he was a player because this goes to every player. He may be one, he could be a, I wouldn't say a special case or an extreme case, but it, considering how rare that is, and this was, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say fortunate, but because he died so young and we saw his brain like this, it makes you wonder just how wor much worse could it have been if he continued living his sentence. And then there is the question, did, um, um, did this have anything to do with his suicide? Now, if I recall, I'm not sure. I should have checked on this beforehand, but I think he had drugs in his system, and those were likely what influenced his suicide. Right. And uh, another thing that you could bring up is Junior Seau also had advanced CTE, and he drove a car off a cliff and killed himself. I mean, there seems to be a... A, a very direct correlation between that sort of stuff and uh, suicidal behavior amongst players. And a lot of former NFL players tend, a lot of them that die aren't of natural causes. I mean, there's the, there's the hall of famers that die of natural causes. And then there's the hall of famers that go and blow their brains out. And that's the issue. And that's really, you know, even if you take the brain from a murderer, the murderer had CTE, and, you know, studies can be done based off of that and see what parts of what parts of the brain does this certain thing uh, affect, and what does and what the correlation does that have between behavior, and that's a difficult that's a difficult thing to. Uh, process unless you have the brains of the dead people like Junior Seau or Hernandez or you know uh, there's another one that killed himself and I, I'm forgetting his name I'm, but without that data uh, Bob Probert Bob Probert killed himself that's an NHL player he had CTE as well you know and that's just that just shows you I was going to say, um, I, th I think this still brings up again one, uh, the issue that the NFL does not do enough to protect its players, and I think that sometimes a player could literally die for the, f for the game and they won't be mad about it. In fact, they'll be glad. It's like, you served us well, and 
enjoy an afterlife if that exists. But right, I'm but I I don't like how they're not putting enough effort for this, especially even when the players are still inside the NFL. They're still playing, not just. I think some people want them to help the players after they're done with the with the NFL, but I'm like, you should help them all the time. Right. And then they want to think mean, about ex- uh, adding more games for players. That's that's going to make it worse. I mean, that's why things like the concussion protocol exist. It 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 is having an effect, but the the issue is is the players also need to recognize and know when the time is the uh, when your time is at its end you know uh, i i would i'm always of the mind that if you have over 3 or 4 concussions that there should be uh, a rule in place that you have to take a year off just to get uh, just to make sure that you know you understand or get what? put on I like the IR boomerang, which takes you out for about six weeks minimum. Yeah, I'm. I mean, if you really think about it, when you're in your early twenties, you think you're in the, an indestructible person. You know, you. Oh well, these hits to my head won't affect me any way, shape, or form. You know, I've had three concussions in my life. You know, I'm 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 still a mentally active person, but I know that's eventually going to affect me in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I think I've only had one concussion. That was like in mid, like junior high. It wasn't even that. Yeah. It, it, it didn't even last that long. It was yeah, like a the, minor concussion. I I've had a major one and two moderate ones, and. Uh, I know that eventually it's going to affect my ability to, you know, process stuff at a quick at a quick pace. You know, and I uh, even now I sort of feel like I stumble over words a few times. But, you know, overall, you know, you in your 20s you feel like you're an indestructible person. Nowadays, now I'm in my mid 30s, you know, I'm able to say, you know what? I I know this is going to affect me. I feel like a lot of players don't get a chance to stay away from the game and forcing them away from the game and thinking about these sort of things could be a solution. I know it's not a popular solution because then you would have to protect that player from uh losing his cash. You know, etc. Yeah. Um, so, to, I guess in conclusion, I really think the NFL should take this into consideration. Of course, they probably aren't now because what we're going to talk about next completely overshadowed it, and it's basically okay. We can move on from that being an issue at the forefront. Which let's just go into it now. Um, on Friday, or last Friday. Uh, Donald Trump was at a rally. Yeah, I didn't think we'd actually talk about Trump on this podcast. I was afraid. I thought the one time we might have to bring him up was if Kaepernick finally got a job somewhere, and of course Trump would open his mouth about him, because I feel like if he finds out, he will talk shit about the team. It doesn't matter. Even if the team donated to him, he'll be like, oh, they're the worst team. Like, they don't know any good. They don't know anything. You know, something like that. But, um, anyway. So... I normally don't want to get into politics, which sounds weird considering I am a political science major, just giving some transparency, but I am going to be getting political here. Bill might will probably be getting political here. I just want to make it clear that if you disagree with me, with me I don't mind if you do as long as you're not a dick about it. You're free to say I disagree for whatever reason, for anything, especially if, when I'm not going into the football segment, but I am going to be putting my opinions on politics here not just the sport that's being involved. So just giving that a bit of forewarning, because I know there are people who don't want to hear about this, and if you want to just go straight to the games, I will probably include time markers to indicate to indicate that. So, yeah. Yep. Let's discuss Trump, because, like I said, Friday he was at a rally in Alabama, and he, uh, he discussed the NFL and Colin Kaepernick, uh, and basically ca- saying... That it, talking about how the owners, if they see their players kneeling during the national anthem, because in his opinion, it is uh, it is protesting, uh, or it is disrespecting the military. And he like says, get those sons of sons of a bitches off the fle- off the field, fire them, fire them, and the crowd was I wouldn't say going nuts, 
I could hear like a loud crowd, but I know that they sound much more louder than they typically do if you're there. But um, right. yeah. now, the, to me, my only my big problem with that was that it's it's kind of funny that when when African American players or people of color go kneel for this, even though that's not what they're uh, they're kneeling against for or kneeling for, they're called son, sons of bitches. But when but when it came to Charlottesville a month or a few months ago. They, the you know, the people waving uh, Nazi flags, Confederate flags, all upset that their Confederate heroes like Robert E. Lee, who, which I basically deemed a lot of those higher figures traitors, which I know I'm from Texas, so you could say I'm not one to talk, but personally, if I lived in that time, I would not want to do that. I would, I mean, I, I don't know, you get what I'm trying to say. But anyway... Right, yeah. And these people disagreed with everybody else so much so that they got that one of them got right. Sorry about that. So as I was trying to say, you disagree with them so much one of them had to get into his car and run into a whole crowd of people killing a woman. You know, with their white nationalist mentality, yes, I I believe white people are the master race, so I'm gonna go run in, run into another white person. But, oh well, whatever. Sure, they're very fine people, basically. That's what he thinks. Like, it's nothing. They're, wh they're very fine people. Okay. I, I don't see a problem with that at all. You know, seems legit. Now, here's the thing with sports. Now, actually, Bill, I, I don't think about it. I should let you chime in on that in case you want to add something to that initial point about calling... African American players and anybody really who kneeled again for the flag, um, SOBs and you know, Charlottesville uh, Nazis, uh, very all, fine people. I don't know if you have, want anything to add there. All it harkens back to is a uh, is a uh, is a very concentrated effort that American patriotism always seems to have you know oh this group is sons of bitches because they don't do this you know they don't respect the flag if you think back to the bush administration a very similar thing was done to us a very group a very group of country singers that weren't patriotic for not supporting a terrible war that got a bunch of our uh, uh, military members killed and that was the iraq war and what did George W. Bush do? He, he went after the Dixie Chicks who were freely speaking their mind. They were freely speaking their mind. And they were against the Iraq War, which we now know has proved to be horrendously cost, uh, costly. It's cost us in p in people's lives. It's it's put people into PTSD situations uh, and shooting up places all over the country. It's it's exactly or themselves. It it's cost the VA is running out of funds for people that are getting their legs amputated or etc. Miscellaneous stuff, and yet. At the height of going to the war in Iraq, and the height of that, George W. Bush, and I was a I was an anti-war guy myself. He said that the Dixie Chicks were unpatriotic, and anyone that was protesting this war was unpatriotic. Now, loving your country means loving your soldiers, right? So George W. Bush loved his soldiers enough to send them to die in Iraq for for another country's freedom, and that's what they turned it into after they didn't have a, a, any of the weapons of mass destruction. But that was the war in Iraq. Now, fast forward that kind of idea into this, this stupid thing right here. You, Donald Trump is playing the exact same card that George W. Bush played in 2003, in 2004, in 2017. It's the exact same card. It's the exact same fight, and it 
it, one George W. Bush in an election because, oh, there are the unpatriotic Americans out there that don't support this. Well, guess what? The non-patriotic Americans that are kneeling are way more of a patriot than Donald Trump ever was when he didn't go to the Vietnam War that my uncles fought in. So, you know, who's really patriotic in this country? Donald Trump had draft, draft dodges because he had a he had a you know bone spur in his ankle, or my uncles who fought in Vietnam, who fought in a war and who watched their friends die. Who's more patriotic? Yep, I I come from a family of of soldiers. My uncle who died a few years ago actually was was serving the Navy. He almost got involved with that war actually, but he retired just before it started. Um, my grandpa, my great-grandpa, he fought in the Korean War on the front lines, lost his own, like, uh, like, a few of his friends, and then my grandmother's brother, he died in World War II while on a boat, while, like, trying to get into, uh, what is this, I don't, I don't know where the boat was, I don't think it was in the ocean, or, like, I don't know if it was in the ocean or, like, in a river or something, but right. he got shot down and he died, his body wasn't found, and, uh, right. yeah. I've, I'm not. I'm not one who wants to be in the military, obviously. And to be honest, I don't want to be in the military. But at the same time, I wanted to make this clear that, or I, there's a lot of distinctions about why Kaepernick kneeled in the first place. Which I know uh, you would think a simple Google search will go, but of course, because Trump says it, it must be true. People are not sure about what the protest started by. I think with all this, this. Di these different sources, you could say, I say that in quotations, by the way, that it's all been mucked together and nobody knows, so I'll just make it clear what it is. It's not, it, this had never anything to do with the military. The national anthem, yes, sure, the song is clearly inspired by soldiers who fought for the freedom of the country. Obviously, if you even, you should remember the lyrics with, you know, like rockets, red glare, bombs bursting in air. Where does that? What does that make you think of? A battlefield. Yes, the national anthem is based off soldiers, but that's not the point. And the flag is not supposed to symbolize military. A military. Yes, I I believe this country has now become over the past few decades a military style one where it you need the military to pretty much flaunt your muscles because oh yeah, go ahead and try and fight us. We'll just destroy everything you stand for. Yeah. But that, to me, that's not what the flag stands for. The whole reason why Kaepernick protests in the first, pla first place, because he believes America is now stand it has been standing against people of color, not because of the military, not because of that. He's made that clear when he's asked about it before. Him and other players have been saying that because they do not like what happened to, to, to people like Michael Brown, for example, did, he did not like seeing like all those horrible things to happen to those uh, to to minorities just for the cops or whoever killed them to get away with it. That is why he was protesting, not because of the not because of the military, not to stand against the government. No, it had nothing to do with any of that. It's just because uh, like minority citizens have been getting screwed over for bullshit reasons, and there is no repercussions. No one is being held accountable for it. It's like, oh sure, we'll get them. That, like, like for example, you hear about what happened to uh, what's his name? I think his la I know his last name was Gray. Uh, the cops that killed him, and, or they shot him multiple times, and they just threw him in the back of a like a van and took him and just took him in, and he died like his uh, his spine or whatever. Yeah, I forget I forget his first his name, spine. but I think his last name was Gray. Freddie Gray. Yeah. Freddie Gray. Anyway, so I know people were like, "Oh, look, the 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 for." I don't know if it was for the city of Baltimore, for this whole state of Maryland, but like the the head the head of the Justice Department there was like at, like she's African American, she will definitely get the like will definitely bring justice and bring those cops down. What was two was it last week or so or something? I don't remember. A few weeks ago at least. Turns out the cops aren't getting anything. No federal charges, nor any uh, any by normal law. They're all off the hook. They're all free. They didn't pay for anything, so it's like, oh yeah, this my this minority represents the government. Don't don't be fooled. They can't put their own values. They have to follow what everybody else says. Everyone is a boss, but that's just my own personal belief that 
I think I think that most police, unless they actually say I'm guilty and they plead guilty, which nobody wants to plead guilty because they don't want their lives to be drastically changed, and that's fair. Right. I can't. I understand. Nobody wants to go to jail. I get that. I don't want to go to jail if I did something, even if I know I did. But if right. I I I believe I if I do it if I did it I did it. That's that. But anyway, that's besides the point. I just wanted to make that clear because Bill now we have to go to the actual part that matters I what did you want to say I, I know I cut you well, off I, there uh, just get, uh, keep going I'll, I'll chime in with where I think it's going to be most appropriate all right all right then so now Trump with all that said this is the one thing you don't do of course there are some NBA ties to it but I'll give you the nutshell version he said curry you're not invited and Curry says, actually, how could you invite me if I never wanted to go in the first place? And the team's not wanting to go anyway, so, yeah, sure, whatever, man. And then LeBron calls him a bum, and I actually really loved NBA Media Day for the for the Cavs and the Spurs and all that. Greg Popovich has been, ri okay, let's be fair, everyone's like, oh, look at the NBA taking a stand against Trump. Look at Curry and LeBron, go at him. Uh, Popovich has been giving him shit before he became president, so he made it, he made it uh, a thing before it was cool. But yeah, okay, whatever, guys. Everybody ignores the Spurs. What else is new? I'm just that's just the salty <laughs> Spurs fan in me, tired of our team getting neglected and ignored. I get it. We're not the flashy Warriors who put up 200 points a game, and anything less is a disappointment. <laughs> and it's like, are the are the Warriors done? But anyway, back to football. So the one thing you don't do, and the and the NBA side that I mentioned showed that, is you don't. You don't attack at the athletes because the athletes, like in sports, there is a brother and sisterhood in all kind, in any sport. If you attack one, you attack them all. You pissed, basically, you you uh, struck a hornet's nest. You should not be surprised that every bee in the hive wants your head. And basically, you had on the next day, you had owners, players, uh, coaches speaking out against this, calling it divisive. You had Roger Goodell to say it was divisive and terrible, a terrible thing to say. You had the, the guy in charge of the, the Players Association also disagree with what Trump was saying. And on Sunday, Sunday, it was beautiful because I just saw both the best and the worst of America, in, or, or of American sports, I should say. So you had players... A lot of players, oh, over 200. This has got to be the biggest protest I've seen in football in my entire life. What you thought with Kaepernick was a little bit. I, you saw players lock arms with each other. You had other players kneel. Some raised their fist. It started with the with the Baltimore and, and uh, Jaguars game, where you saw the owners link arms with their players as well and protest against Trump. Trump's acting like, look at this, look at the good thing I'm doing by having them lock arms in unity against me. I'm so great. And it was, uh, like, you know, he's taking credit for something he ignited, but okay, man, but whatever. You had player, uh, you had other teams, even teams that were quiet. Like, I was, I was actually, I'll tell you right now, I was disappointed that Houston and Dallas did not do anything. I, I was, I was expecting, I was actually expecting the Patriots not to do anything because Kraft is a friend of Trump, Brady's a friend of Trump. So I was like, wow, they're not going to do anything. I don't expect them to. The Jaguars owner actually did donate a million. Same thing with Bob McNair for Houston. And I don't know if Jerry Jones did, but. As you know, Texas is fairly conservative. I know Bob McNair is conservative. I know about the whole he tried to get anti-transgender laws uh, going, or the bathroom laws or something like that go into place in the Houston area. And obviously that backfired. So I don't like him as uh, politically, but, you know, I love the team and the roster, obviously. Right. But even then, I was proven wrong. When we get to the Cowboys, they all kneeled. Uh, in unison before the flag came out and Trump's like, oh, look at all the boos. Um, an NFL reporter that I follow, he's on a podcast, uh, Greg Rosenthal, he reported, no, those boos were nowhere near as loud as when they first came out on the field. There were some boos, yes, I know, because Arizona is typically a red state. Uh, why do you think the Cardinals are there? <laughs> that's that, that's just a joke on the color scheme, not actually politically, political affiliations. Right. Um. 
I was glad to see that because Jerry has made it clear he didn't want his players to kneel during the anthem. So I, I see it as a compromise. And it seems they were they did not actually come to this conclusion till 15 minutes before the game. They were discussing this. I wonder if they were discussing this more than the plans to beat the Cardinals. But um, possible. It wouldn't surprise me. But um, it was to them. It was hard getting all the players to do. They wanted to do everything. As a, as a whole unit, like say, when there were players locking arms in other teams, some of them were kneeling, some of them weren't, and they were just, you know, doing uh, doing a hand over the heart thing. And there is one misconception that people need to understand. You know, the st- have you heard about that Steelers, uh, former Army Ranger, uh, Alan Nueva or something? I think it's. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. People are like, oh, look at him. He is such a patriot coming out on his own against his whole team's wishes. That's not how it is. He's actually fun fact. He was wearing the shirt of a YouTube, of a popular YouTuber on his a little press conference thing. I was like, "Whoa, this guy's YouTube <laughs> trash like the rest of us." Oh man. But uh, anyway, um, I but um, I do have one thought that is a little bit on a on a different wavelength. All right. And it's, I, I like to finish the more, misconception first because there's everyone's yeah. saying that Andrew Villanueva, I think that's what his full name, was saying was doing that against the the team. No, if you actually get the picture, the infamous picture that's spread around, because his jersey is now the most selling jersey right now. That wasn't the intention. The intention was to have all the captains go up, but he got there first, and the other te- players were slower, and they didn't make it in time. Big Ben had to come up and say, it, was, it wasn't it was just going to be him, it was going to be all of us, If you and it was our mistake. We got out too late, and when the when the anthem started, we just had to stop. We couldn't run, and they were right there. They I don't see why they didn't take a few steps, but I get that. They didn't want to come off as interrupting anything. And even then, the and uh, Villanueva apologized for making it for not in, for unintentionally making it look like he was taking a stand against the Steelers because the Steelers' goal was to dis- disconnect from that issue and just have the captains go out to represent the rest of the Steelers' squad. But anyway, Bill, right. go ahead and clarify what you wanted to say. All right, I have a I just have a thought on a different wavelength, and it's about the fans. They're anti-player and going after the players for taking their stand and kneeling for the national anthem. And it's it's just the fact that I feel, feel like a lot of those fans that are doing that are hypocrites. And here's why I think that the fans that do that are hypocrites, is that the fans that go after these players – probably have never stood for the national anthem in their house when they watch it on TV. And what's the difference? Like the Thanksgiving game, when they played the national anthem before the Thanksgiving game, do any of these people stand up in front of their TV and put their hands over their hearts and start singing the national anthem to their TV? The answer would be no. They sit on their ass, watch, watch the national anthem being sang, and don't care. So what is the difference if you're sitting in your house watching the television and watching the national anthem being sang? If if you're a truly patriotic American like Donald Trump wants you to be, if you're not a if you're patriotic, then you're not sitting on your couch watching the national anthem. You're not kneeling, you're not cooking, you're not doing any of that. You are standing in front of that TV standing up with your heart of uh, your hand over your heart and singing the national anthem to your TV. Do people do that in their houses? No, they do not. So what is the difference between the players being able to kneel in a public forum versus these fans who are being generally hypocritical when the that, why don't people protest the national anthem being shown on TV? And it goes to commercial time. Why? Why? Why is the national anthem not good enough to be shown on TV? Then uh, it's perfectly fine for you know them to cut the national anthem and show a beer commercial five years ago. Why? So why are that? Why? Why was there no anger over that? And the simple fact is that the players that are protesting it are black. 
And that's the only issue there is. If there was a real major thing, they they would have been protesting five years ago about, you know, it's, oh, uh, I'm getting a beer commercial instead of my national anthem. Where's my national anthem? I need to stand up and sing it to my TV right now. Where Where is that outrage? And there was no outrage because you know why? It's a manufactured drama. And it's a drama designed to divide people. And it's a stupid thing to talk about. And it's, it's being come up with by the perfect person because his poll numbers are going through the toilet. And there is your political hot take for today. I'm sick and tired of talking about stupid garbage in this country. Oh yeah, trust me. Like I said, even though I'm a political science major, I really didn't want to bring them this up that often. And someone said, well, Josh, maybe you shouldn't have talked about it. But I think it's something that needs to be discussed. Because if it's an issue that people don't want... or people don't want to actually have a discussion about it's almost all the more reason to bring it up if you ask me and plus i just find it i just find this idea that people are going after the players when you know they they don't protest that the national anthem's not on television they should protest for the national anthem to be on you the mind if i tell you some uh, bad time. fan base stories from sunday about this i'll share a few not everything just like three that I, I that stood out to me that you might enjoy. The first one was that the steel that a Steelers fan, this old man, burns his memorabilia. Like this is like really old jersey stuff. I don't even think it's a jersey. I think it's a shirt. A shirt. He burns his stuff on the on the, like this sidewalk. So uh, have a nice. I don't know how much that cost at the time. So but today that would probably be about one hundred fifty dollars. So enjoy burning that one hundred fifty dollar memorabilia. Um, there was also a Buffalo Bills uh, got, uh, worker who quit his job as soon as he saw Buffalo Bills players doing that. It's like, oh, hey, go ahead, don't uh, don't let the door hit you on the way out because the players sure aren't going to miss you. In fact, they might be saying to themselves, oh, thank God that piece of shit is gone. If I knew he was that bad, I would have been a dick to him. But Everyone would like to have that. Of course, job, so to me, good. the w worst one, and this makes it worse for me because they won, was the Eagles. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to undersell that Jake Elliott 61-yard field goal because I love me some kickers, Bill. I love me some clutch kick, uh, uh, clutch field goal kicks at the last second, especially from long distances. They're beautiful because kickers are one of my favorite positions. But anyway, there was this... So there were like 20, 30 protesters at, in front of the Eagles stadium. They weren't violent. They were peaceful, just holding up signs about, you know, take a knee and all that. Some were sitting on the ground, some were actually taking a knee, and yeah, there is this, this couple of these white guys, I don't even know if they're drunk or not, I, I, I kind of want to hope they were, because that way maybe they'd regret it, but any, uh, even so, they were, like, one of those, like, American made, you know, like, flaunting his jerseys, like, I, I'm not even sure if these jerseys are all made in America, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if I found one that said it was made in China, <laughs> no. I wouldn't no, put it past the NFL. They're not made in America. Yeah, anyway, anyway. So, um, so that happens, and another guy behind him, I can, you can, fa you can hear three of the four words, but, because the last one gets faded out to audio noise. It's actually, I retweeted this days ago by a beat writer from Philly, so if you want, you, can, you have to dig for it, but I have it retweeted on my timeline, as well as a good rant by Dale Health, ha Dale Hansen, but yeah. Uh, anyway, so what he says was, go back to, you can't hear the rest, but I'm certain you can th you can do the math. If you've heard this, you've heard this phrase, especially if you're, you're African-American, and you've, you might have heard this shit all the time, especially if you're from, like, pre-civil uh, pre rights movement. You've heard this saying before, which I don't think we'll ever have a viewer from that time watching this, but they've heard that before, and they know damn well what they were trying to say. Go back to Africa was what they were trying to say, and I'm just, like, for once, I really want the Giants to, uh, to have kicked their asses. And they nearly did it, but, you know, the Giants are like the Chargers this year, too. They find a way to choke, even if, you know, they play good, but whatever. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, those were, like, three... There are other stories. I'm certain people can look, and they'll be come around. But the last thing I was going to mention is that I can't... This is a bit of a shot at one of my friends... Because, and this one is not even a sports guy. 
I find it funny how people who never cared about sports, like they say, I hate sports. I hate the people in them, like the players, and I hate because they're egotistic. You know, they make too much. They make more money than me. Ah. Uh. And my personal favorite reason, or my, um, like, I hate fans. And I get that one because they were probably bullied by jocks. I know I was when I was younger, but I still love the sport. But anyway, so, you know, there are, pe there are these, like, kind of, like, typically nerds. This guy's like an anime nerd. Or a weeaboo. Right. Anyway, right. so I I find it weird how he says like he hates sports. He doesn't like player. He doesn't like the player or the thing. He just can't say I can't sit through and watch it all, whatever. And he said and I say hey, why are you retweeting sports stuff? That's a bit weird because I caught it. He was retweeting the whole like something about when I was tweeting about Greg Popovich, and then he tells me to shut up about it. I'm like dude, what? That, all right, for, no, first he tells me, um, no way. He does tell me to shut up. And it's like dude, it's weird. That you hate, or oh, he tells me he hates sports, and then tells me to shut up. But I say, wait, what? What the fuck? Because why are you retweeting sports stuff if you hate it? If you hate it so much, why the hell are you retweeting? Oh wait, I know, because you hate Trump. I just want to get this last political viewpoint of mine out of the way because I don't like him either. I'm gonna make that clear. And if somebody has the audacity to come and call me out and say, "Oh, are you a Trump defender? You you love Trump, actually. In fact, you're probably alt right. You're a straight white male who supports Trump. And if you do, and if you legitimately mean that, I will I will personally laugh so hard. I might not have a voice after that, but I'm going to just laugh so hard because if you know me, especially if you're a friend of mine, and you still have the balls to say that just because I think it's hypocritical for you to compromise your own views and opinions just to take an easy shot at Trump's like I hate Trump so much I'm gonna go go against what I what I like and dislike just because somebody from that 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 platform is speaking out against him. Like I said, I hate Trump too, but I just find it weird how people who hate these things that they normally hated so much are gonna just get involved in it. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's, very, it's a very weird issue for me. I don't know. I don't think I can get the point across right without sounding a bit like a hypocrite, but I just find it weird how people who say they hate sports all of a sudden care about it now. But they, but obviously they won't care later on once this issue fades away. They're going to stop caring about what sports people say. Like, I don't care. They make more money than me. I hate them. It's not, it's not about the issue of whether it, it, in the end, it's the ability to be able to say anything that you want and to yeah. be able to protest anything that you want. And yeah. in the end, even if they make more money, et cetera, et cetera, it doesn't matter. The thing is, is that they are standing for something. Yeah. As, and as, ha as have we in this podcast, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and plus they do things for the city. People like they Trump and his supporters will tell you that Kaepernick and LeBron don't do shit for their city. Kaepernick last month donated a million dollars to over to like various charities, especially those for like women, um, like single mothers and uh, uh, other minorities. And LeBron is literally building a school for at-risk children to get back on the right path. So uh, I don't know. LeBron could probably build a fucking city if he wanted. And one last thing: there are great conservative football players that are also very. And to see what Donald Trump yeah, has done. Yeah. Also, you a know, big. It's not just. It's not just one group of people. It's the entire group of people. A lot of great, nice conservative people are very upset by this. They have every reason hijacks, right to because they're lumped in with hijacks, these people. It hijacks their. It, it hijacks what they stand for to warp it into some false thing that every conservative stands for. There are good conservative people out there that are way above this, and I hope and I pray that, you know, a lot of good conservative voices come out and support the players for being able to stand up for what they believe in. That is, that is in the end, the perfect thing, and it, it's not, it's not a um, it's an issue that affects us all, not just, not just, uh, I mean, police brutality. There's a white woman getting shot by police in, Min in Minneapolis after getting responded to. It's police brutality all over the country. And, you know, it started through, you know, police brutality through, uh, for African Americans, but 
this is more than just one group at this point now. Yeah, but anyway, one last shot to Derek Wolf because telling people like this, is, like basically he put a statement that could be best paraphrased as "You should be grateful for this country, and if you don't like, it, just leave." It's like, and people kept saying it was a "go back to Africa" thing, but I think he was just taking the whole stance against milita the military. But to like, dude, fuck you. I, I understand your opinion, and you're entitled to have it, but I just disagree with it. Don't give me that. Go back, go to another country then. That's not what the problem is, but anyway, we've spent 40 minutes on this, a lot longer than we should have, but... Anyway, this <laughs> well, this is going to probably be the longest games. podcast we'll ever have now, but anyway, I think we're done. Let's move on to the games. There's only three games that... I, I don't know how we'll go through them quickly, but this first one had a lot to do, and this one was actually another was a, a sneaky game of the week and nobody saw it coming because if if anybody told me three days ago that this was going to be one of the best games of the week I would have laughed at you and said no way Jose there's no way the Texans can hang with the Patriots on offense and of course they they surprisingly surprisingly did there are no moral victories in this however but the Texans were actually in the lead for most for a, for a good chunk of the game but, as you know, Tom Brady, the greatest, found a way to exploit it and win 36-33 on a last-minute touchdown, a deep touchdown pass to Brandon Cooks, who had two touchdowns of his own. Chris Hogan had a touchdown, I think. And, man, the secondary, for, the secondary for Houston is ravaged. The safeties are not good. I miss Glover Quinn, Bill. That's why I say, if he can't get a ring with Detroit, I will feel very disappointed. Because I right. could sure use him on my roster right now. Right. I mean, the the Houston secondary itself was uh, there. They they had some trouble, and the Patriots weren't even totally full strength. You know, the Gronkowski was kind of kind of limited himself. I mean, he 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 was okay in that game, but you know, he Brandon wasn't Cooks had his best game. By far, yeah. I think Brandon Cook single-handedly owned the 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 Texans at the end. And plus, fucking, I'm gonna give a lot of shit to Corey Moore because they, he could have actually ended this game if he intercepted the ball. Last-minute interception would have ended the game, and Deshaun Watson, in his second start, could have beaten the Patriots. Now, I was very angry with this result, not because they lost necessarily, like. But because it was close, Be uh, if if this was a thirty to three blowout, I wouldn't feel mad. It's like, ah, oh, who saw that coming? That's a uh, you know typical day for the Patriots. Beat the bad teams and move on on the throne of ease. But no, this was close. The Texans w went back and forth with them. Every time the Patriots scored, they matched. They matched it, or they just put something. They, it was surprising for that to happen. Of course, the the, the defense had a field day with Brady. Three fumbles. One was recovered for the touchdown by Jadavian Clowney. If that other one, which some would say uh, the center was sh pretty sharp, and I, I, I give a little credit for him, but the, b the ball literally fell on his hands. So if he actually dropped that, I probably would have cut him personally. It's like, how do you, you had it drop in your hands, man. Why do, you why do you let it go? And plus, if that one was actually taken away, that would have been the end of the game too. The Texans right. played tough in New England. I'm not going to say if they were at home, they would have beat the Patriots. I don't know. Sometimes I feel the Patriots are better on the road than at home, at, and other times vice versa. But Right. I I mean, Houston, and a, a major credit to the Houston Texans defensive line, they were putting pressure on Tom Brady all game. I mean, he was under... Nate Solder Dennis has Tucker just game. fallen off the cliff. You know how people say quarterbacks fall off the cliff? This guy, even though he's a left tackle, looks horrible. He's been a problem for them since week one. At first you thought, oh, it's just the Chiefs' defense was great. But oh, then you have the Saints, who have no defense, somehow were giving him problems. And then now you had, obviously, the Houston defense is great, but the fact that he, who has been a solid left tackle for his whole career for New England is now a liability. The the line has become a liability, and their late-round picks, one of them is out, and um, the other ones aren't just clearly projects. Right. I mean, it, 
the uh, the offensive line is a definite definite liability for this team, and uh, hopefully they'll fix uh, they'll figure it they'll out. They'll fix, fix it, it. but I mean, like they're injured, they have a lot of injured players right now, so that's the problem. Dante Hightower is still gone, and as you saw, look, if a rookie quarterback like Watson can actually give these guys trouble, I'm pretty sure if they had Deontay Foreman, this game might not have been as close. There might have been ten points less, for all I know. Because that it looked a little distraught at times, and which is good for Watson. He needed this kind of game where, again, this was his second start as a rookie. You're going to New England where they typically fillet any rookie quarterback alive. He hung against the against Tom Brady pretty well. Of course, Tom Brady got it because he's the goddamn greatest quarterback that you'll ever see. Unless Aaron Rodgers can go win four Super Bowls straight, I'm going to always go with Brady, just simply because yeah. he's got the consistency, and plus, his franchise is, be well, is better for him than, uh, the, pa than uh, the Packers. In fact, if Aaron Rodgers really wants to get rings, he'll leave and go replace Tom Brady in New England. Right, but, uh, I mean... Have fun with that. You know, the, the issue is, is you know... Tom Brady, you you can never count the Patriots out. And that is always been the case and it will continue yeah. to be the case. And oh. It was shown in the Super Bowl and it was shown again last week. Yeah, I was going to say after that play where he that Corey Moore nearly in, uh, intercepted the ball but he dropped it. The next play, he tries to pick off the ball. The the first time it luckily, I mean he outsped Brandon Cooks that play. He actually was torching Brandon Cooks, getting ahead of him to get the ball, which was great. But the next time, it looks like Cooks really tried for that one, and he tried to get in the way of the ball, which, that's a risk. Sure, if you catch that ball, you end the game. But here's the thing. You're at the edge of the end zone, and obviously you're running towards out of bounds, so you probably wouldn't have caught that. You just would have put him in a fourth down situation. But what you should... but you didn't focus on pushing Brandon Cooks out because it's legal to push a player out of bounds if he's trying to catch the ball. You can't push him when he's, say, like, when you're running to, like, to get into position. That's a, that's a flag, obviously. But when he was, tr he was looking at the ball and already had his arms open ready to catch it, it's legal. Am I right, Bill, or no? I'm pretty sure you can push the player. That's what, he tried to be a hero and it cost him the game. Yeah, I mean, the issue, that was one of the issues. I mean, you know, the Houston Texans uh, just, they played good enough to win that game, and they just they just couldn't hold on. Yeah, to it. I'm, okay, you know? but now let's talk about the other side. I already mentioned the, the Patriots defense looking questionable, but Deshaun Watson, the young players, I should say, him and Foreman, Foreman nearly single-handedly won the game. In fact, I'm confused why on third and one, they tried to give it to Lamar Miller to get it. Why didn't you keep Foreman? Foreman was torching them, and he is a power back that's meant to get, if he can get open, he'll get a lot of yards. But if you need him to get one or two yards because it's third down, he can probably do it. Or you could have done what he, what Watson has been doing is giving the faking the ball to the running back and taking it in himself he is actually early in the game he was getting stuffed he they were actually they were actually making him either lose yards barely gain anything or just stay, uh, get back on the line of scrimmage but a after the second after the first half was over he was actually gaining first downs with his feet gaining uh, m making players miss him a lot let me tell you he i have not seen the Houdini magic shit that he'd pulled off since Tony Romo. I was too young to see Brett Favre in his prime, but everyone said, like, that's a Brett Favre type of move. To me, my equivalent of that was seeing, like, Tony Romo evade three rushers and throw the ball deep to whoever it was at the time. Right. That, that shit it, it, was it, insane. It, it, I'm like, again, second start against the Patriots. He... A lot of what Deshaun Watson does do uh, it is very Brett Favre-esque. You know, uh, just the added thing that really kills Patriot, the Patriots all the time. 
and it's running quarterbacks. The running quarterbacks tend to really, really uh, give the Patriots Remember, a lot of Remember, four years ago, they lost to a running quarterback named Ru- uh, Cam Newton. Yep. They lost that that very uh, questionable um, that very questionable ending to that game against them on Monday Night Football. And speaking of, I believe they're playing them this week. I think this is a grudge match now, and uh, I think, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it is. Bill, they have a they have a grudge with the Panthers, and what could have been a possible Super Bowl Fifty candidate as well didn't happen, obviously. But still, right. oh, it's gonna be. They're gonna have another test with a mobile quarterback, but. If Deshaun Watson's playing like this, I know he didn't have a perfect game. He did throw an interception. I know that. But some of the throws he made were in tight coverage. And then let me tell you, Deontay Foreman will eventually overthrow Lamar Miller for the throne as number one running back. Oh, that, yeah, that, His that, yards he, after he, the catch. Like I said, and that final drive, or that second, the, the final drive, the se- final long drive the Texans actually had, Foreman was... He he gained practically all those yards on his own. That's again why I'm questioning. I get he might have been tired, but one yard, one yard, you go for it. In fact, some people thought, why not go for it right now? Why not go for it on fourth and one? I get that because if you get it, it's over. But if not, all the Patriots really need is a field goal. I mean, that might to win, I mean, which that's a problem. Yo, know, if, if you bring, you leave your big back in. To gain a yard, yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you got to. Or let Watson do it. Fake it to him and run it in yourself. That's what I do. I believe your big back is going to gain a yard. You know, it's it's like if Legarrette Blunt is gonna run forward into the line. You gotta believe that the the big guy is going to get a a a yard. It's not. it, it stands to reason, especially against New England's defense, which has looked very, very shaky against the run all year. Yeah, and again, he was running for his life a lot of the time, and he just made plays. But um, what, what else? if basically, if Watson can keep playing a, at least a, to a good enough fraction of this level, um, maybe the Titans may not have, well, should probably stop thinking that they're the clear favorites because uh, the Texans could possibly claim their throne again and um, get it for th- the third straight year. The Jaguars are I back mean, to being a threat, but I think towards the end they're going to teeter off, especially once they play a lot of the tougher teams like the Steelers, which actually, who knows, they might have, the Steelers tend to play to the to the team's level, so who knows. But right. you're gonna play the Steelers. You gotta play the Rams. You gotta play. Um... Actually, no. I think those. I think that's actually it. Because the Je- the Ravens were the first contender, and of course they gotta play the Titans over there at the end of the year. So, who knows? Potential Sunday Night Football if the uh, a finale if the Texans don't uh, make a contention on their own. But we'll see. I I like how Watson's playing, but now he's gonna go up against the Titans, which the Titans defense is is a little bit better. Uh, just I I think it's still young. It's like how the the Cowboys are, which was a, is a young uh, young uh, secondary core that's gonna get better. But the, at least unlike the Cowboys, they the Titans at least have an established pass rusher. I forget the guy's name, but yeah. Right. This next th- these next three games, if I recall, are home games. So the Texans really need to make a stand if they want to stay in the playoff race uh, in for their division or a wild card, if that's possible. Because you never know, the Ravens might teeter off as well. But I don't think they will. Um, you have to win your home. You have to win your home stand because oh, you've yeah. got the Titans at home. You have the Chiefs, which is a tough one, but I think it's actually manageable if things go in their favor. And then you have one against the Browns. Come on, that's a free win at that point. Come on, you can do it. I want to see the yeah. factory of of sadness churn once again. But yes, Deshaun Watson, <laughs> great game, just couldn't get the win. But um, anyway, let's move on to another game, a more controversy. Bill, you know we had to get to it. The Detroit Lions. Surprisingly, I will say my favorite. My favorite uh, power rankings guy, Elliot Harrison, was actually high on the Lions because. He, Unlike other people, he's he's saying that yes, the Lions are a for real team, and don't let that record fool you, because they could very well have been three and zero, just like the Falcons are now. The Falcons escaped; they actually escaped Ford Field with a 
questionable win because of the final play. Honestly, I really want to talk about just the final play, but there is the rest of the game. To be honest, it felt like the Falcons repeating Super Bowl 51, where they were blowing the lead, and it's because of Matt Ryan. I know people wanted to say that Matt Ryan was a great is a great quarterback. He is. He's a franchise quarterback, but he makes about the same mistakes as Winston can get. And basically, that whole offense, sure, it was having its way with the with the Detroit defense. But when the Detroit defense needed to make a play, they did. Glover Quinn had a pick six. Darius Slay got, I think, two picks. Was it? Yeah, it was something like that. Darius Slay and Glover Quinn are playing out of their minds right now. It's they're the clear, clearly one of the best cornerback safety uh, group or duos in the league. A com- right. That's a combined, I want to say, four or five interceptions. The, they might, yeah. At this rate, I think they're on pace to, at the very least, match the year the Houston Texans had 30 turnovers. I think they're on pace for that right now. I mean, and, and the, the thing about the Lions' defense is that the Falcons' offense looked okay, but, I mean, here's the issue with the Lions' defense. It was, it was minus Jared Davis, who did not play in that game. And that, that man is quickly, quickly developing into a premier linebacker in the NFL. So we're minus that. We have damn good corners now and damn good safeties. And, you know, the defensive line was getting in Matt Ryan's face. He wasn't, he wasn't you know, uh, sitting back in the pocket and, you know, just uh, being able to do whatever the heck he wanted. He had Ezekiel Anson in his face the entire game. The Falcons were getting rushed. The Lions' defense is legit. It's just the Falcons ran the football a little bit more effectively than the Lions did, uh, which the Lions' running game was anemic again. It, it seemingly spurred, uh, sputtering. Uh, around and yeah, and the big, and plus the big... Stafford had clearly the uh, one of the better games among the two because he didn't. I don't think he did. He throw an interception. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. I think he's just had that like you know he's had two turnovers, one fumble last game, and then the interception in the first game. That's yeah. it. Yeah. But he didn't commit okay. a uh, a turnover this game. He played a pretty good game, um, but I. I, I don't know. I, it, this felt like a, a Falcons game that they ch- choked on. They were choking. Matt Ryan was giving the pay, the the, the um, Lions many chances to come back. And they scored, I think, on two of the turnovers. Obviously, one was the pick six. But I want to say they did score some points from the second one. But the third turnover, they didn't. And that was perhaps the biggest mistake that they were unable to complete the drive. I believe Eric Ebron dropped a pass on that drive that yeah, that should have that could have been I'm, caught. I want to talk about Eric Ebron. Eric Ebron is the biggest draft bust the Detroit Lions have ever had. And that includes Joey Harrington, a terrible quarterback. Eric Ebron is the worst first round pick we've ever had in franchise history. And he doesn't justify a number ten posi- uh, number ten pick. He's at best a fifth round tight end right now. He he's nowhere near. He's nowhere near being a a first ten pick. He said he wanted to be a Pro Bowler. He's lucky if he can catch anything. Legitimately, Eric Ebron is a nice guy, but the issue is is. I, we've, uh, m- my family and I have nicknamed him Butterfinger because everything goes right through his hands and he can't catch anything. And what was one of the big, the big things that he was hyped up? Oh, he's got great hands. Where are they? Again, Martin Mayhew is a terrible drafter, and that's why I trust Bob Quinn more and what he's doing. It won't surprise the me team. if they trade, uh, if they trade, uh, Ebron away for somebody else. Ebron needs to go. Ebron needs to go. 
He he is legitimately a terrible. The only tight problem end. is if the other tight ends don't look good, what are your options at that point? You know, and you don't want to draft another exactly. tight uh, tight end in the first round because you might not get one for whatever that's worth the draft pick you get. And it's clear what? Bob Quinn goes by best talent available over team need. He with with the exception of the first round last year be, or last seat um, the last draft because they really needed a new. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? They need a new linebacker, considering they had to cut DeAndre Levy, who was meant to be their star linebacker. They needed someone to fill that role. Yep. But we'll see, but they still have holes on other positions that could always be helped upon. But we'll see. Anyway, let's get to the controversial play. Once again, uh, the Lions screwed over by archaic rules. It's another Sunday night for me, if you ask me. But, um... All right, so let's set it up. Final play. It's a thir it's third and goal. You can't spike it. You I mean you can, but you only have one shot afterwards. There were 12 seconds on the clock when the ball is snapped. Um, he throws he throws the ball to Golden Tate on one of those. I don't know. I don't know what type of of call you have. The best way I can call it is like, it's like what Before Russell Wilson it. tried to do to to give it to for to win the Super Bowl against the Patriots. But obviously that was one of the rare exceptions where it ends at a pick. That typically is always caught and is always going in, especially if you're a fast player like Golden Tate. What did you say, Bill? Yeah, it's a short, skinny slant. And yes, I don't think you call it a screen pass because it does go a little more forward. Yeah, it's a slant. Yeah, there it you go, a slant. a slant. It's a slant. And it went, And to be honest, when I look at that play, I'm thinking, fake the slant and give it to Galladay. Look how open he was. But I, when I look at it... Sure, it might work, but if the if the guys aren't fooled, it's an easy pick six in the making. So I'm like, oh right. no, they kind of that was kind of meant to go right away, like that was the plan. But um, regardless, anyway, it was called a touchdown, but then upon further review, because if they all have all touchdowns have to be reviewed, it was deemed not a touchdown, and they had to enforce this archaic rule. I haven't, I don't think I've ever seen that according to the ref by rule you have to go on a 10 second runoff cuz he was called a runner cuz he didn't go out of bounds obviously he was down by um, in the middle of the field so he was out uh, so they had to run 10 seconds off the clock and it's over which is still the stupidest thing in the history of the NFL uh, i mean it, let's just let's just put the elephant in the room there's there's video evidence of him maybe being down before. Yeah, he gets at first I'll over. tell you. Right I, oh, okay, go ahead. I I honestly, from my point of view, where his hand is on the football, you cannot tell where the nose of the football is compared to the white line because overall the the way that those cameras on the goal line work it it sort of got a little bit of a it, it, there's a little bit of a leeway where that magical line goes up and down right so obviously from my perspective you don't you can't really tell where the nose of the football is he's got his hand over the nose of the football so you can't really tell where that is so in the end to me, the indisputable evidence of that not occurring is out the window because his hands over the nose of the football. How? Wh where is the nose of the football compared to your hand? You could have the football cupped in your hand and very tight, and it's right against your palm. And if his palm was over the line, that means it's a touchdown. God knows where that football is in his hand relative. Yeah, and personally, like I, like I'll tell you right now. At first, I thought it was a clear, in it was in, but when I I had to look at the thing multiple times and slow it down, I had to slow it to about like a quarter speed. And now that I think about it, to me, I had to think, I had to ask myself a few questions. One, when does he secure the ball? When is the ball secured? Two, when is that is the hand from the Falcons guy behind him on him at the time? when the ball secured and my answer to the first qu I, well I can't give you the answer to the first question about like what exact time because every video is different but I found the time 
where he I could say, okay, now the ball's secured, and I looked for the hand. Was it touching him? Yes, it was. Was the knee down afterwards? Sadly, yes, it was. However, here's the thing, and here's the shit. There's some. There's actually some shit that some uh, counter that some uh, counter arguments to this. But anyway, so if this was if this was called down by contact, that means the Lions have eight seconds to get in formation and try to go for it. You can't spike the ball because it's fourth and goal. Right. So you have to go for it. What do you do? Quarterback sneak? Do you try to give it to your running backs? I, at first I was thinking, why didn't they give it to the running backs in the first place? I get why, because if you, if you, all, if you go into the pile, it takes a lot of time off the clock to get out and get back in position. I get that. But at the same time, I I would have actually gave it. I would have tried running it because I would I would like to believe Amir Abdullah can churn through and do it himself. But anyway, so I can I the problem or some people say that there's no way they can get set in eight seconds. That's where you're wrong. It is possible. Do, do you Bill? Do you remember that game last year against the Vikings in Minnesota? Yep. The one. Yep. They had. Oh, they, yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure Stafford told his players this, and I think I might have said this when back in that in that day, uh, when he threw that pass. I think he told his players, "When I throw this pass, you start running to where that guy is, or run to where that where that where whatever yard he stops on, because th- like, because we have to get there quickly. If we're not, if not, we're not going to have time to spike the ball. When I I forget who caught it, but when the receiver was down." on the ground and the whistle is blown 10 seconds of the clock when they spike it there's three seconds on the clock left it took them seven seconds to get set and make a play right because you could also argue you have to get in position in a in a uh, uh, good position that's not an illegal formation or commit a false start or you lose five or you lose five seconds of runoff oh no is it ten seconds of runoff but at that point, it's like, okay, then it's on whatever players did not get get the formation right. That's fair, because you fucked it up. That's on your player. To me, it's like, it's one thing if the players fuck it up, but this was a case where the refs fuck it up. If the ref made the right call and said he's down by contact, then they should have actually went through and, you know, fin- uh, let, the pl- let the players try to get in formation, because I, it took the Lions seven seconds to get in formation. The the issue is is they would have buzzed down, and they would have reviewed the play to see if they they actually did go in. And at the end of that at the end of that review, they would have said no, and then we would have been charged ten seconds anyways. So in the end, we were damned if we did and damned if we didn't because of a stupid rule met, uh, again. Stupid rules in the NFL are killing the ratings of the NFL. It just flat out. This is the second time you know, a, it, uh, an obscure rule or a lack or a rule that's a lack thereof has affected a team I like in this year. Because the first time that has happened was the lack of a rule with uh, Kawhi Leonard at the Spurs. Because well, you know the that the, the Zaza dirty play, no no yeah, no shot Zaza for a free throw Kuyo. and all that. Yeah. Fuck Zaza. I didn't like him with the Mavs. I obviously hate him even more with the Warriors or whatever. And then you have this. And of course, let's not forget the Calvin Johnson rule happened, where he's clearly that's clearly a catch, but the NFL doesn't know what a catch is. Um, there was the there was the Cowboys one where they they picked up the flag where the Cowboy clearly committed holding. And if you ask any other defensive player, they'll say, "Yeah, that's a hold." And every wide receiver would also say, "Yeah, that's a hold." Yep, I mean... They didn't at least keep it so the the penalty will be offset and say, okay, replay third down. They didn't do that. They said it's fourth down. Okay, guys. This game against Atlanta... They might miss this one. It proved proved to me that the Lions are a legit Super Bowl contender this year. And the Falcons... This is a preview of the NFC title game. These are the two most complete teams in the NFC. And for the game to end that way, and it just it just breeds this 
again, resentment in the city of Detroit. Hashtag Detroit versus treated, everybody. Yeah, that we're treated like this while the rest of the teams in the NFL and the rest of the cities of the NFL get treated a different way. We're treated like garbage because of the city that we live in. The city gets a bad rap for for a myriad of reasons, and we're treated differently than every other team in the country. And it's it's annoying, and it's pathetic. And if you ask anyone from here, you're going to hear the exact same thing. It's been the refs for 50 years screwing us over, and it's going to continue to be the refs. No referee wants to see a Detroit Lion win a game. And that is just that's that's the state of the the state of the NFL. The it, it, it's Detroit versus everybody, and it, it it's a very apt thing because that's how people in this city feel. I know that's how I feel, and a lot of other people from this area feel. Yeah, I can understand that. I can re I can understand how, why that's a. Um, anyway, I, I swear, I think if you want to actually have better, a good shot of not being screwed over by a ref, you might need the bet, the one of the better, consistently good refs in the NFL. You would need Ed uh, Hochuli, you know, the guy who said, "Yes, Ed there are Hockley. penalties in the Pro Bowl." Yep, <laughs> Ed Hockley. Oh yeah, oh that's how you say his name. I I didn't know how you pronounce it. Yeah. Yeah, it's Ed Hockley, and then there's a few other guys like Jerome Boger. Yeah, I I, uh, I want Ed. You want Ed. He's probably the best one that I hear. Plus, I, I just can't Ed get Hockley, over that line. Jerome Boger, uh, a few others. But, you know, if you get Peter Morelli, Brad Allen, or this the, Walt Coleman right there, who just... Uh, it's not really his fault. He had the... Yeah, well, remember, now it's not on the refs entirely, per se, because this wasn't, like, a right. flag. This was done by New York. New York fucked uh, has just fucked up. Well, the rule. Here's the oh, thing. Yeah. It's gonna be again, like like I said, like how I said with the with the Spurs earlier this year, and now the Lions. There are gonna be new rules or edited rules because of those situations. But you know, it's too late. Too little, too late. You could say one, the Falcons, last... the, like the Lions, had many chances to win this game and they couldn't do it. That's a fair argument. But to be fair, there were also many times the Falcons could have uh, put this game away. Like they could have scored on multiple occasions. But you know. Matt Ryan had to throw the game away on his own way. So, so you could, honestly, the whole argument that the Lions could have won this, but you know they lost, so they deserve it. It's like that's that's bullshit because the the Falcons could have blown them out, but they couldn't do it. And one last point I want to make before we move on is that if that was Aaron Rodgers who threw the pass and Julio Jones making the catch and diving into the end zone. They would have never had it. I mean, Jordy Nelson? As is, as is evidenced by our next game. Oh, yeah. Our next game is perfect evidence of... Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I wanted to bring that back. one up. But, yeah, you mean you mean Jordy Nelson, right? Because Julio plays with the Falcons. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I know. But I meant, uh, it, like, if Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback and Julio Jones was the wide receiver... You know, because of the combination of their star power, they would have been, it be, oh, oh, yeah, that's definitely a touchdown. Personally, I would yeah, have, I would have faked Matt it to Stafford Tate and give it to Galladay, because Galladay had a lot of space, and then you have the rookie, uh, uh, you know, as I like to call him, hashtag steal the draft, but I don't know, he had a good game too. He had a pretty okay game for a rookie. I need to see yep. more of him though. But anyway. Last game, the Monday Night Football game. This one looked, I thought it was going to be a bit of a snooze fest, but no, it was actually pretty good. <laughs> Close for most of the game, but then the, the second half, when the fourth quarter happened, the, the Prescott engine awoke, and then all of a sudden the Cowboys looked a little bit like they did last year. And But that's not the focus to me of how they won this game, but I'll get to that later. The first touchdown, I think, was the one where Dak jumped over a guy. Like, well, not like, jumped over, he got practically hurtled into the end zone. That was pretty cool. But then the Dez Bryant touchdown. Oh, man. I, okay, at first, like, oh, shit, he, that was a pretty good effort. Got in, carrying, like, the entire secondary with his back. And they said it was a touchdown. 
but upon review they said there is no evidence to overturn it even though if you ask me if i had to generally get a good area of where it is i don't think he was in i don't think that was i'm not saying they wouldn't have got the touchdown either way i'm pretty sure it can't be that hard for ezekiel Elliott to get half a yard and go in am i right if he can't if he can't do that against this cardinals deteriorated defense i would actually be worried for his whole career personally Right. Like it's you're not playing the Denver defense, kid. You're playing the you're playing the Cardinals, who don't have Calais Campbell anymore. So go ahead, you should be able to punch it in. Dak could do it for you if you want, because right. Dak got the first yeah. rushing touchdown of the season. Once again, actually, that's <laughs> this is the second time in a row he got a touchdown, a run, rushing touchdown before Zeke. I think. Huh. Anyway, so yeah, that touchdown. Golden Tate tweeted, uh, nice touchdown, Dez, with, like, the equivalent of a shake-my-head emoji a few times. And I, he's clearly still upset about that. I don't blame him. Tate should have ha- I could have had that in. Uh, but honestly, it was, uh, I don't know. I, like I said, I'm pretty sure they would have got the touchdown regardless. I just believe that shouldn't have been a touchdown. To be, to, be, to be fair, they actually did get one right that I thought they were going to give to Dallas. The whole, um, what's it, Bryce Butler, I think, where he got, it was not the first touchdown, the one that was a pretty good touchdown catch. The one where um, he caught the ball, fell to the ground, and then got up and ran because they didn't blow the whistle dead. No, that, that, he, that he was down by contact, but he was down by contact. But I thought they were going to let it go and give him another touchdown. But no, they didn't. To, wow, so man. it, I'm like, okay, you made a step for, you made a step forward, but still, sure. I just, I basically, I think if there is a, a, a moral to what we're complaining about, I want consistency. Either you be consistently good or be consistently bad. Like if you're just terrible refs to everybody, I wouldn't be mad. It's like everybody's getting fucked over. That's not our, that's not their fault. It's the, it's the refs' fault. They're all bad to everybody. But if you're that, if you're so what? good. Then uh, one slip up and you're gonna get hell for it. You know what I mean? Exactly. exactly. I just want con- personally. I'm just here for the consistency. That's all I'm. Com- that's all I'm complaining about. But I think the only reason the Cardinals were in this was because Larry Fitzgerald was literally carrying the roster on his back as well, making two of the best catches you'll ever see this year so far. I don't know if you saw that one right. he got against Orlando Skadrick. It was beautiful. I love that catch. Oh, yeah. I'm like, get out of here, Beckham. This guy who's older than you and could retire at any moment is is a better catcher than you. I'll get to Beckham in a bit because, oh, man, that's a clown car right now. But uh, anyway, um, now, the, the reason why this team won, though, was not because of entirely the offense. The defense did. Demarcus Lawrence actually leads the league in sacks now. He has six and a half sacks to his credit. In fact, the only time the Cardinals could make plays were when he wasn't on the field. To me, that makes me wonder. His leg was, he was limping a couple of times, and I'm thinking, okay, something's going to be wrong with him if they keep pushing him out there, because he's their only good pass rusher now. I knew he was going to be good when they draft, as soon as they drafted him, but I'm not sure about, um, how do I put it? I'm not sure if his health will last if they keep pushing him. His Taco Charlton clearly needs to make right. a move. The linebackers need to also step up, like Jalen Smith. But we'll see. But I think he's he's gotten in, gotten into form. The, but finally, the defensive line fi- uh, has shown has been proving what I said. They aren't the problem. The biggest problem on the defense, I should say, it's been the secondary. And then to top that off, you lost Sean Lee, and that's why I said I wish you got J.J. Watt. Or T.J. Watt, my bad. I wish you got T.J. Watt because T.J. Watt is a good linebacker, and he's been a Sean good linebacker Lee for Pittsburgh. Injury. Yeah, Sean Lee's an injury risk. I mean, uh, once I heard that he was hurt, it's like, uh. He's gonna get cut, and then he's gonna go to like the Patriots and get another ring, or get his first ring, I should say. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway. I, I personally think that I that the defensive line is not going to be the biggest problem for them. It's going to be the secondary, which is too young. And you have rookie safeties having to go into corner because the rest of the corners are bad or injured. Yep. Orlando Scandrick's I mean, your best cornerback, and that's not saying much. He's not that good. Yeah, their, their defense is uh, 
kind of banged up and it's kind of uh, young and inexperienced. I mean, the, the defense itself, uh, what the way Dallas is going to win games is keeping the opposing offense off the field and playing and running the football. That's how you keep the other offense yeah, off. Yeah, but when field. you go up in the playoffs, you have to have your defense be reliable, not top tier, yeah. no like no Denver defense, but it needs to be reliable when you need it to be good. What Denver did to them is the exact blueprint of beating the Cowboys and you know. So basically 2012's uh, Seahawks. Yeah, basically, basically stop the run, cover up Dez, double cover Dez, and stop the run. And there you go. There's how you beat the Cowboys. Yeah, yep. But, um, anyway, Bill, so I, I don't have much else to say about this game. It was pretty good. There's, of course, the statements or the, the kneel from the Cowboys. I already talked about that. But, Bill, before yep. we move to the picks, oh, man. Oh, God, this game, this week was so bad. I lost all four different opinions of each of these games against you. The Rams one I got wrong. The uh, Browns one. The Browns disappoint me once again, Bill. I'm like, you guys are going to be five <laughs> times better than you were. And you go and you go and lay an egg to the Colts. Shame on you. Not, that's not even the worst one. <laughs> the Browns are a bad team already, but the Dolphins go and lay an egg to the Jets. You lose to the Jets. You're supposed to go one and fifteen. You weren't supposed to be the team they lose to. You were supposed to t be the team that destroys them. Yep. Why? Where? They had a very my. They had a very Miami Dolphins game against the Jets. Jesus Christ! I'm like, go get out of here. Just stop playing. Forfeit all your games. <laughs> That's horrible. But um, the uh, another one. Here's another one. The Giants. You know, I mentioned the Jake Elliott field goal. The Giants somehow for three quarters were absolute trash. But then Odell Beckham had to prove that he is probably the only good offensive player they have on the roster. Yeah. I mean, their running game is non-existent. Brandon Marshall's not playing very well. And Sterling Shepard's not playing very well. Eli Manning's not playing very well, legitimately. Oh, Sterling Shepard had a good touchdown pass though in that game. He, had, yeah. but um, I to mean, be fair, that the Eagles got banged up. They lost. They have Fletcher Cox out, and now they have they lost Darren Sproles with a broken arm and torn ACL. He's probably done for his career. And I may not have liked him because you know he plays for the Eagles and then he played for the Saints, but I liked seeing him play. He was one of my favorite for like a five foot six running back. I'm only four inches taller than him, and he would school <laughs> me so hard. Oh, yeah. I like I'm that small but very elusive running back. It's like he was he was very slippery. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, hopefully this is not the end of Darren Sproles. I hope he gets another can. That was not. Uh, I, I think he's. Definitely, I think he's definitely got still stuff in the. Well, clearly, if he's the uh, best running ball. back out of a younger core, that's embarrassing. But um, <laughs> anyway, there's the thing where Beckham is peeing, making, imitating a dog and peeing on the on the on the in the end zone. Or to yeah, the point where the owner yeah. has to say, "I have to have a talk with him because he's even though he's the best player and he can go be a dick around all he wants." You're zero three. Just stop. This just, uh, the, I mean, and not only that, it cost his team 15 yards. That that was penalized. Oh yeah, I don't know if it actually made them help them spark the 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 you know the loss, but it's just horrifying for for Giants fans to so like. I know he's great, but you know nothing bad's gonna happen to him. Let's make that clear. They're not gonna suspend him. They're not gonna fine him because he's got the star power. And plus. He is the only good offensive player. Their defense can't win for right. them. Like, here's the thing: they are they are about in the same position as where Houston was a few years ago. Except even then, at least Bill O'Brien can actually work his fucking magic to win nine games. These guys can't even win one right now. Like I said, wait till they play the Chargers. Yeah. In fact, they're gonna beat the Chargers. Here's a bold prediction: they're gonna meet the Chargers without having either a win. 
There's a there's a saucy prediction for you there. Oh but damn. That's that's like at week six though, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, it's week five actually, so this week you, you spoiler. But speaking of, Bill, are you ready for the picks? Indeed. All right, Bill, start us off Thursday night football. Thursday night, it is the Chicago Bears at the Green Bay Packers. Um, Green Bay is going to shit stomp on these guys so hard that Mitch Trubisky uh, whispers are going to start coming out again. In fact, he will make his start next week, so that's how bad they're going to get thrashed today. I'm going to pick Green Bay as well. The, the Bears... They, they'll give them a game. I think it'll oh, be a close game. Oh, God, Bill, I just remembered that other game, the one last game, the Bears, the, the lull cow moment. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know how the Steelers play to the team's levels. Remember, they were, like, so hot a couple years ago, and then they lost the Jets in, to Rex Ryan's Jets, no right. less. Yeah. The They lost to the Bears, who have Mike Lennon at quarterback. The running backs were, they got schooled. They lost to two running backs. That's <laughs> yep. embarrassing. And then the worst part was, the Bears could have actually prevented overtime when they had blocked a field goal and nearly took it to the house. But explain what happened, Bill. I didn't see it. Oh, you didn't see it? No. You need to see the play. It is horrifying. Basically, he tried, he was, he took, he was going to take it to the house. But then he slowed his pace, like trying to show off to showboat into the end zone. And a Steeler player caught up to him and knocked the ball away into the end zone. So that should be a touchback and end the half. Nope. Another Steeler player. Uh, uh, you, you, you remember the thing, the, the, the missed call against the, uh, against the Seahawks t- uh, during a Monday Night Football game? Oh, where, yeah. Okay. Where they, they, it's supposed to be... Uh, what do you call? I forget what the play the the penalty is called, but you, if you if you're you cannot when a ball's in the end zone for like a touchback, you cannot push the ball out of bounds so the other team can't get. Right. That that was against the Lions. <laughs> yes, they called it this time, and the Bears had to kick a field goal. So because you know the the if if the defense at the time commits a play uh, a penalty when there's no time on the clock, the team gets one more play. Yep. And so they had to kick a field goal. So what should have been seven points and a win made it overtime to where the Steelers had to get further embarrassed. Right. But anyway, sorry about that. Just let's go it's to the next good. game. It's all good. Uh, I think this is another London game, but the New Orleans Saints at the Miami Dolphins. This is a London game. I'm going to go with the Saints. The Dolphins derp too hard. I'm not trusting them again. And I think that they're going to come back from that horrific game that they played and play a really good game. I got the Miami Dolphins over the New Orleans Saints. Remember, Drew Brees could have been drafted by the Dolphins, but they chose no. Their loss, <laughs> not, not his. Right. Next up, the Tennessee Titans at the Houston Texans. I'm going to go with Houston. I love t- seeing Watson out there. I think he'll keep bringing that magic and uh, steal a win from a, what's considered the heavy AFC South favorite. Also, that defense is a bit overrated. I've got Tennessee right... Uh, I've got Tennessee, but this is going to be a close game. I I think this will be a very close defensive game. Uh, next up, the Jacksonville Jaguars at the New York Jets. Okay, the Jets won last week, but I really don't see them pulling it out this time. I'm going to go with the Jaguars. I got Jacksonville as well. They're just a better team than New York is, just flat out. Well, neither team has a quarterback, so there's that. (laughs) Next up, the Carolina Panthers at the New England Patriots. It's the grudge match I mentioned. The Patriots are going to shit stomp on the Panthers and dab all over them. No Greg Olson for uh, for the Panthers. Uh, their running game's kind of bad, and Cam Noon's inaccurate. I've got the uh, New England Patriots. Next up, the Detroit Lions at the Minnesota Vikings. I'm calling for an overtime game in my upset of the week. I have the Lions crushing the Vikings' uh, hopes and dreams. Whether it's Sam Bradford or Case Keenum, I think they'll pull it off. 
Minnesota, uh, what you need to do is stop Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. I think the Lions will do that. And Matthew Stafford has a lot of weapons. I've got the Lions. Next up, the Buffalo Bills at the Atlanta Falcons. Oh, no. The the Bills are going into a trap. They're all going to get murdered here. <laughs> I've got the Falcons as well. The Bills are not on the same level as the Falcons. Next up, the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know why everyone's saying the Steelers are going to blow out the Ravens just because the Jaguars did it. I th- I think the Ravens are going to do better this time and actually win this close this game. It's probably going to be like 2017. Both teams are embarrassed, meaning both teams are going to play really hard, meaning it's going to be a close game. I just got the Steelers, who have a little bit more firepower. So I got Pittsburgh. Next up, the Cincinnati Bengals at the Cleveland Browns. Okay, you want another upset? Here's another one. I've got the Browns actually beating the Bengals. The Bengals, I can't trust their offense. I can't trust anything about it. When they look good, they blow it anyway. They could have beaten Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau and kept him winless against Cincinnati. But no, they had to go fuck it up. So have this loss. The The Browns de- deserve this more than you do. And I've got Cincinnati. I don't trust either team. This is like flipping a coin. I think the Bengals team will come out a little bit more. And at least, you know, Andy Dalton's an experienced quarterback, and that's about it. And, I mean, they got eight. So I'll I'll give it to Cincinnati, but not very strong on that. Next up, it is the L.A. Rams at the Dallas Cowboys. The first non-primetime game, possibly only non-primetime game, the Cowboys have. And it's probably one of their best games of the year. The Rams look hot. I'm going to go with Dallas just because I think the defense is looking a little better. But I won't be surprised if the Rams win this one. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I have the Cowboys. But if, if the Rams if the Rams beat them, they are a legit contender in the NFC West. Coach of the year goes to Sean McVay at that point. <laughs> Possibly. Next up, the Philadelphia Eagles at the Los Angeles Chargers. They're gonna. Fu- it's gonna be a sea of green now. First you had red, now you have green because the Eagles are going to overpower the Chargers. In fact, they won't have to do much because the Chargers will choke on their own lead anyway. <laughs> Fuck you, have- Spanos. <laughs> I also have the Eagles as well. Chargers are going to be playing in front of what 10,000 people so. most of them will be Eagles fans <laughs> next up the New York Giants at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the Bucks, you disappointed me I know their defense is injured now but come on man you make it close I expect you to do better do better against the G-men make them go 0-4 let's see how fr- how, let's see how Odell Beckham feels after <laughs> trying to think he's t- uh, hot shit last week I've got Tampa Bay as well uh, I don't trust anything about the Giants I Next don't know up, the San Francisco 49ers at the Arizona Cardinals the Cardinals, I think, they could have been. They would, they might have actually beat the Cowboys if they had a running game. But oh boy, I think they'll. I think they'll squeeze by this game barely. I agree. I got the Cardinals as well, barely beating out the 49ers. Next up, the Oakland Raiders at the Denver Broncos. I want to hear who you have for this game first, Bill. After last game, the Raiders were kind of exposed, and they're playing probably a much more difficult defense. So I'm going with the Denver Broncos right now. Uh, the Raiders are a good, damn good team. They'll figure it out after this week, but you know that defense is legit. I agree, and especially because it's in Denver, it's very hard to win there now. I just I'm gonna trust Denver's defense to pull through and give Simeon enough or, uh, leeway to work with. 
So the Sunday night game, the how are they on national television Indianapolis Colts at the Seattle Seahawks. To be fair, everyone thought Andrew <laughs> Luck would be starting this year, but uh, I guess not. This Okay, I'm just going to say this. If the Seahawks don't blow out the, this Colts team, which the defense has been outperforming the offense, which I never thought I'd see, and let's make it clear, it's not by much. The defense is still trash. But if the Seahawks can't put up over 30 points against this team, or if they show a lot of struggling at certain points of the game, I would start to be worried about this team making it into the playoffs. Right. I, I think this is desperation mode for the Seahawks as well. Uh, the Seahawks are going to go into this game and win it, regardless of who's starting the game. And remember, everything's set up for them. This is prime time within the clink at night. And the yep. fans are going to go nuts. Yep. Next up, the Monday night game, the Washington football team at Kansas City. I'm <laughs> I'm kind of glad this is a prime time game, the racist bowl. <laughs> oh no. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. They're too good at home. I don't think I don't think they'll lose a game at home at all. I've I've got the Chiefs as well. This this is this is going to be a blowout. Oh yeah, I won't be surprised if Kareem Hunt gets more yards than the entire uh, Washington team. And that's make it clear these two have some of the highest rushing yards in the league so far, which is surprising from the from Washington at least. All right, Bill, let's have next week's Thursday night football game, which next should be a great Thursday one. Thursday night game is the New England Patriots at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going to love this one. I think this one's going to be great, and I'm going to go with New England actually barely winning this one. And I've also got New England. I think it'll be a, a little bit more comfortable of a lead. Uh, this will probably be a, another game without Doug Martin and you know that running game. The running game's what you need to kill the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, that's a, such a long podcast. You had a lot to say. I'm going to have to do some editing. Oh, but, yeah, uh, I hope nobody gets upset over everything. But I was, oh, Well, mostly because it was all half politics. But, yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.